I could, I wanted to know what the situation, your situation in England is. Uh, how many, how how would you assess your support level? Um, what what uh, successes have you had? Do you see your position um, advancing? Uh, please sort of give us a. At the moment, it's it's rather pitiful, to be honest with you, in uh, in Britain. You know, we look at Marine Le Pen in France and Wilders in uh, in Holland, and now the Sweden Democrats, who are who are now polling number th uh, number three. We are nowhere near that. I think that the UK Independence Party has has takes a great deal to blame for this because a UK? lot of people hope that they are going to do something about it. But I think everyone that really understands it knows that uh, they're not going to. So it's going to be. How are they different from your position? They uh, they don't talk about Islam at all. Thank you. And and they do not talk about um, immigration unless it's from the European Union. So we have six hundred thousand people a year coming in, okay. or seven hundred thousand with the illegals, and they only talk about the three hundred and fifty thousand who are from Poland and Lithuania. They okay. ignore Somalia and uh, Bangladesh and Pakistan. So, so that's uh, that's a problem. But I think that um, because things are moving quite quickly now, I think that in Sweden people are waking up. Yeah. And I think people are starting to wake up in Britain. So in another two or three years, I think we will, we, we hopefully will be seriously contesting the 2020 election. Paul, could you could you help some of us? I'm, I'm speaking for myself, actually, but maybe some other people agree with me. We need to really understand the definition of... You know, there's what people have painted you and the painted Pekita and Pekita, painted other organizations. For those of us here who are of the Mosaic faith, as opposed to people from, from other groups, we remember the right wing, what mm -hmm. we call the extreme right wing. So mm -hmm. some of us are conservatives, some of us are liberals, but some of us have been affected by the extreme right, and I mean of Marine Le Pen's father, for instance. Mm -hmm. Or I would refer to uh, the jackboots of, 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 of skinheads in parts of England and parts of Germany. Could you just get that part clear for us to understand so that we could separate people who want to preserve traditional cultural heritages of their own country versus mm -hmm. those who, who have been, you know, have seen those jackboots and seen those skinheads, what they've done to Jews? Mm -hmm. and said about Jews, Palestinians, and of course, um, uh, <clears throat> the immigrants, the current cultural wave of immigrants. But I think yeah, there is a huge difference between, you know, th uh, these, these organizations still exist in Britain, you know, obviously they exist all over, all, all over Europe, but you know, one of our things really is we paint ourselves as classical liberals. You know, we believe in small government and uh, freedom of speech and freedom of uh, uh, movement and you know everything that is classical liberal. But if you want to, if you want to preserve your liberal democracy, you cannot have Sharia law and this sort of stuff coming into it. But the moment that you speak out about it, because Islam is at the very top of the politically correct <coughs> protected class. So the moment you talk about it, they will label you as, as a Nazi, a fascist, a xenophobe. And there's nothing you can do about that. All you can do is, is go out in public, look to be decent, say decent things, argue the classical liberal point, point out that you are not inciting hatred of Islam, you are pointing out, or, or of Muslims, you are pointing out the core tenets of Islam are fundamentally unsuited, or not unsuited, fundamentally impossible for them to integrate into our societies. And this is in no way a, a right-wing uh, ideology. And we also go out of our way, not, not deliberately, we occasionally talk about Israel and its right to exist. And the far-right groups in England, uh, Jack, Buckby and I are now Zionist shills and mm. other such things that we get accused of. So, so at least we are avoiding you know, the anti-Semitic bit but, you know, the astonishing thing about, about the anti-Semitism, Jews are now leaving France, mm. you know, in, in, in increasingly large numbers. And I think it was a, a long time back, 2003, the European Union set up a, 
a, a commission to investigate why this was the case. And, and they assumed that it would be because white French native skinheads were, were beating up Muslims. And it turned Jews. out not to be the case. Jews. Oh, sorry, uh, Jews. Yeah. And it turned out not to be the case. It was, it was Muslims that were doing it. So the European Union initially shelved the report and didn't want to put it out. And, uh, and when they did put it out, eventually, they just lied. And they said, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, the, it's the Front National. It's, uh, it's, it's Marine, well, at that time, Jean, Jean, Jean-Marie Le Pen's boot boys. So you know, to, our, to, to finish up, we will never avoid being, being accused of those things. All we, ha- all we can do is just appear to be what we are, which is, which is decent, humane people trying to preserve our ancient liberal democracies. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, question. <clears throat> Danish TV two recently has been brought. Actually, they're in the middle of broadcasting a four-part series where they went into mosques and they filmed what was being preached in various mosques in a, with hidden cameras. Uh, it was a four-part series, and two of those four parts have been broadcast so far on Danish TV. The result of this was that. The public outcry was so large in Denmark that they actually shut down support for a mega mosque being built in Urhus, A-A-R-U-S, mm-hmm. how they would say it. And they've actually, um, uh, the, the, the Sharia Council of Denmark shut down. So there was a public outcry based on rational information that was genuine information that was presented to the public in a normal way. 2007, there was a series in the UK called Undercover Mosque, where they did the exact same thing, except they arrested the makers of the documentary. They arrested Channel 4 producers. Channel 4, it was dispatches, Channel 4, exactly. Now, (laughs) there's a second part to this question. Oh, yes, you were arrested for quoting Winston Churchill on the steps of a building Mm -hmm. uh, in the UK during the last election campaign, Mm -hmm. federal election. My question is, why does England seem to be even more totalitarian and irrational and undemocratic and 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 and, and you know prosecution of truthfulness which i guess would define totalitarian than even these scandinavian countries but i think that the you know the bigger that the muslim threat becomes <clears throat> the more the authorities are going to clamp down on us I think they actually see the rise of Islam as, as now being because of the numbers. You either throw them all out or you let them stay. If you let them stay, they will, in years to come, control the country. So I think the politicians have actually pretty much accepted that now. So in order to have a quiet life, they are not going to go anywhere near them because they're violent and they do horrible things. You know, they're going to come to us and say, listen, you've got to accept that you, that, that you are going to be living at some point in the near future in an Islamic country. So be quiet and accept it. And the worse it gets, the more they clamp down on no, us. They don't say that. They ass- we have to interpret that. Yeah, exactly. They haven't come out and said that. I- they, uh, pretty much there's a, there is a... a uh, prevent strategy, uh, as was called, which was, which was intended to, to deal with uh, Islamic fundamentalism. And that's now being replaced by a countering uh, violent extremism uh, yeah. uh, uh, bill. Bit bill that's being put through now. And you would think that this is only about Islam, but it's not. I was, uh, I was looking through it and, it and it says it not only will they counter uh, Islamic extremism, but neo-Nazi extremism. And on page eight, I find that I am now, according to my government and David Cameron, that, that I am now a member of the neo-Nazi extreme right that the government needs to monitor. Yeah. Two of the things I've said are actually in their document. Yeah. So they are going to clamp down. And I don't know how much longer in Britain I can keep doing what I'm doing. Because, you know, the whole Winston Churchill thing was just to really prove a point. You know, if you cannot say something essentially fairly... Uh, moderate about uh, about uh, Islam, bearing in mind that it was said, written by Winston Churchill, and Winston Churchill's book is for sale in every single high street shop. It is not a book of hate, but if you actually say the words he used, you will be arrested, and they will try to prosecute you. They're clamping down further. Could you tell and further. us what those words are? I can't remember them to be honest with you, <laughs> but it was. Um, well, it, you quoted. You said, "I am a racist." 
And they took that literally rather than you just said, I'm a racist because if of how I was accused of X, Y, Z. No, that was a, uh, no, no, that was a different thing entirely. Oh. I, I, I was making the point there that if you... If, if 20 years ago you were accused of being a racist, it probably meant that you, that you didn't like people with a different skin color or, or from a different country for purely bigoted reasons. But the left have moved the, the goalposts so far now that if you wish to preserve your culture and your, and your people as a people, then you will then de still deem, be deemed to be a, a dreadful, horrible racist. And I said, look, if that makes near racist it makes every single Englishman and woman that wants to survive in this country a racist as well. So let's all just say, we'll all be racists. You know, you, that word has got to be taken out of operation. You know, it's ridiculous. They can still use that word and it frightens people. So the point of that was to say, don't be frightened of it. There is nothing remotely racist about wishing to preserve your culture. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, have a, I have a question about what makes uh, people who are politically correct uh, tick. Uh, like in, in Canada, there's a group called uh, Queers Against Israeli Apartheid. <laughs> and if they actually look at the situation, the situation for homosexuals in the West Bank and Gaza is infinitely worse than what it is in Israel. Yet they completely ignore that and concentrate on uh, whatever, on... Uh, uh, you know, they just go. They, that, that's only one example. The same thing with women, and you mentioned before, even with communism, well, in the Soviet Union, they were very proud. You know that uh, when uh, they took over territories where there were Muslim people, that women would re remove their headdress at that time. And you have these these people who call themselves Marxists, who are basically espousing an idea that is the absolute opposite of whatever communism was supposed to be and so on I just it doesn't make any sense to me all the, or this is the same thing whatever with Desmond Tutu in terms of Christians and I say the attacks against Israel on the other side just ignoring the slaughter of Christian people in the Middle East and so on like what makes it that why do why don't they support the things you know it's, it seems to be that the right is much more interested in supporting the rights of women than people who call themselves feminists. Well, you know, or the, the rights is more, uh, is more concerned about the rights of homosexuals. But as long, people, as, uh, as long as the left is attacking Western institutions, Western countries, Western culture, that's what they exist to do. And they will always demonize us, and they will always ignore what is going on, for example, in, uh, in, in Palestine and women's rights. And the interesting thing about why do they do it if you look at Eastern European leaders today, people like Viktor Orban in, in, in Hungary and Prime Minister Zeman in, in Czech Republic, the Polish guy whose name I can't remember, the Slovakian Prime Minister, they are all saying, we are not going to have any Muslim immigrants in our country. We are Christian countries. We're not going to have them. <coughs> and why is it the only politicians saying this are all from countries that used to be ruled by the Soviet Union, by communism. And the reason is they did not have 60 years of politically correct subversion. After the war, after World War II... <laughs> it's very funny what you say. They just sent their tanks in. So, so their revolution was immediate, and they then lived under full communist rule. They, they had had their overnight revolution via tanks in the streets. They couldn't do that with us, we're too far away, so they set out to subvert. And... Feminism, for example. Feminism didn't, didn't really exist over there. They were given medals for, for glorious motherhood. If you had three children, you would get a medal. If you had five children, you get a much better medal. And that's Marxism in action in a country that has already had its revolution. The children sat in rows and recited their times tables and learned their grammar and learn where places are on a map. You know, they didn't do all this vague sort of stuff we do because we are being subverted because it's going to bring about social chaos, anarchy, revolution. Like Marx said, he would stand astride the wreckage of Colossus. This is what it's all about. And that explains exactly the attitude of ex-Eastern European countries to this migrant crisis and Western politicians' attitude to the migrant crisis. <laughs>